Welcome to Stacktastic, the weekly web show for the avid comic book reader and those who aspire to become so. Christmas is closing in fast, and so that leaves me just this one episode of Stacktastic to help you complete your wish list for Santa, or for you older kids at heart, your pull list for your local comic book store. It was a tough call, but I've decided to use this last slot to focus on getting you ready for The Wolverine, Hugh Jackman's upcoming sequel slash reboot slash just please watch it. I'm sorry for X-Men Origins Wolverine flick. And as I researched the titles that were available, one thing became very apparent. Marvel doesn't care if you want to read any old Wolverine trades. There is very little available, but let's hope that changes as the film's release date approaches. But that means in addition to recommending trades, I'm also going to point out individual issues you might want to hunt down as well. Just pretend you're Wolverine. Who would have thought that this little hairball, first coughed up in 1974 to fight the Hulk, and then to help give the X-Men a United Nations vibe in 1975, would one day compete with Cyclops to lead the X-Men? And he would compete with Cyclops in other ways as well, creating one of the greatest love triangles in comics, as he tempted Jean Grey with a role on the wild side. And of course he got a huge boost when Hollywood cast this guy to play him in the movie, and this guy to play Cyclops. Sorry, James Marsden, you're a cutie, but just not when you're standing next to Hugh Jackman and crying. Why did they make him cry so much? Anyway, because Wolverine wasn't conceived as a leading man, his character arc has been a slow burn spanning over many, many, many comics. If you can dig up a copy of Essential X-Men number one, you can peruse the early days of the character, and he also figures prominently in many of the X-Men stories I highlighted at the beginning of the month. But if you're interested in the stories that made Wolverine who he is today, then I suggest you start with Weapon X. After all, for Wolverine, due to his memories being erased, for decades this is where it all started for him as well. By Barry Windsor Smith, the story tells of how a top-secret Canadian government project took a mutant soldier and made him a living weapon. X2 drew from this story, but while X2 was awesome, it was no Weapon X. And speaking of the movies, because Wolverine was as big a hit with mainstream moviegoers as he was with comic book readers, Marvel found themselves in a race with Hollywood to tell his origin story. See, for over 30 years, Wolverine's past before Weapon X was a mystery, and it probably would have stayed that way if not for Singer and company. But despite being a product of circumstance rather than inspiration, origin is still spectacular. Written by Paul Jenkins with art by Andy Kubert, it reads and looks like one of those great classic novels from Dickens or a Bronte sister. So those are Wolverine's beginnings, but perhaps one of the greatest chapters in his life is his time in Japan, where a man lost in his own feral rage discovered the teachings of the samurai. This is the story Hugh Jackman is hoping to tell in The Wolverine, which will feature the infamous clan Yoshida, the Silver Samurai, and the love of his life, Mariko. But while Chris Claremont and Frank Miller's Wolverine miniseries is considered the defining tale of Wolverine's time in Japan, it does not include one of the most important events in the Wolverine mythos, the death of Mariko. Yes, while Jean Grey is Wolverine's great unrequited love, he actually gave his heart to the conflicted daughter of a Japanese crime lord. Mariko first appeared in X-Men number 118, in that essential X-Men number 1 trade I mentioned, and died 13 years later in Wolverine Volume 2 number 57. Who knows where you can find that? It used to be an essential Wolverine Volume 3, but alas, that's totally out of print and not even available for resale as far as I could tell. And those are the basics, but perhaps you just want to read a really good Wolverine story. First, let me recommend Wolverine Logan, written by Brian K. Vaughn with art by Eduardo Rizzo. This isn't an instant classic or anything, but with that kind of talent, you're guaranteed a good read. You might also enjoy Enemy of the State, where Wolverine is brainwashed by the hand and set loose on his own friends, the kind of story only Mark Miller could dream up and pull off. John Romita Jr. handles the artwork there, the same artist who went on to team up with Miller on Kick-Ass. Then perhaps my favorite recent Wolverine story is Get Mystique by Jason Aaron and Ron Garney, where Wolverine is dead set on, well, getting Mystique, and it's not to give her a hug. So those are my recommended reading when it comes to Wolverine. I've included links in the video description on where you can buy them, plus keep your eyes peeled for new trades to hit stores around July when the Wolverine hits theaters. And that's this week's Stacktastic. I'm Grace Randall for Think About the Ink, and I hope to see you back on Friday for Between the Pages. Until then, happy reading. <laughs>